Is chewing gum good for your teeth or bad for your teeth? I was recently asked this question in the comments and it's actually a really good question because the answer is actually both. There's some potential bad things, but there's potentially some good things. In this video, I'm gonna explain them all so you know exactly what to look out for. So first things first, as a rule of thumb, chewing gum after meals is actually good for the teeth. Why? After eating, leftover food gets stuck on the top surface of the teeth as well as in between the teeth, and that food provides a nutrient for the bacteria that live in your mouth. They break down this food, turn it into acid, which is a big cause of tooth decay. Chewing gum stimulates saliva, which helps get rid of that food, it cleans the teeth, and that saliva also helps get rid of some of the acid that the bacteria do produce. So from a teeth standpoint, it's really good. Where you can go wrong, however, is chewing sugar-based gums. The reason is that the sugar from that chewing gum, again, provides a source of food for the bacteria. They turn that food or the sugar into acid. That can cause tooth decay. So the caveat here is chewing gum is good as long as it is sugar-free. The other thing to look out for is you've got to steer clear of citrus flavors because they do contain citric acid, which is bad for teeth because it's an acid and we know what that does. So we know that sugar-free is great, but there's some that actually go even further to benefit your teeth. So some of them contain a molecule called xylitol. It's a sugar substitute and it's been proven to actually inhibit the growth, so the survival, of some of the bacteria that actually cause tooth decay. Now over time, with long-term use, it actually changes the bacteria in the mouth, which further reduces the chance of causing tooth decay. Now that is awesome. This is great for people that want to take an extra cautionary method to reduce their chance of decay. Here are a few that I've found that are commercially available and I'll link some of those in the description below. As well, some chewing gums can actually strengthen teeth and reverse the decay process. These are ones that contain casein phosphopeptide amorphous calcium phosphate, or CPP-ACP. Basically, CPP-ACP contains high levels of the building blocks of teeth, calcium and phosphate, and they'll actually embed themselves into the tooth which can remineralize it. So if you have a tooth that the starting decay process has happened in the enamel layer, you can actually reverse that process, which is pretty amazing. These chewing gums are typically more expensive, but they're gonna be pretty useful for someone that already has like a lot of decay in their mouth, or they've been told, hey, there's a few teeth that we're gonna watch and monitor because they might need fillings in future. Here's an example of one that contains CPP, ACP. I'll link it in the description below. So apart from avoiding sugar and citrus containing gums, are there any other negative things that we should know about? Yes. Well, the human jaw joint, it's a very complex and delicate joint, and it's not designed to be chewing for hours on end through the day. It's only meant to be for a few meals here and there. With overuse, it can actually lead to wear and tear and problems with the jaw joint. Now, unfortunately, I can't give you an actual number on how much is classified as overuse because everybody's jaw joint is different. What I will say is that if you already do have jaw problems or you start chewing gum more frequently and it starts to develop jaw problems, you might not be the best candidate or just chew for a lot less. As a rule of thumb, I'd say for five minutes of light chewing after meals, as long as you're not getting any jaw pain, you should be safe while still getting the benefits of the chewing gum. Now, as a closing statement, some people might question the sugar alcohols and whether they're gonna cause decay or not. Now, fortunately, the main ones that are used like sorbitol and mannitol, those ones have been shown to not be broken down by the bacteria, which means that they can't be turned into acid, which means they're not linked with tooth decay. So there you have it. I hope you got something out of the video and it clears some things up about chewing gum. If you wanna help reduce your risk of getting decay, it's a really good thing to add to your armatarium. If you did like the video, please like, share, subscribe, send it to a friend. Those things really help me out a lot. If you've got any questions, put them in the comment section. Have a great day and keep on smiling.